Okay, I've got the recording going. Okay, welcome. Um, I'm Andrea Beam, and I will be going through the fiscal year and uh, fiscal with um, fiscal year end checklist. Let's don't rush year end um, for 2024. Um, again, you can follow along. I'll be going through the PowerPoint, which we have listed here out here on our um, SSD meetings and trainings, if you like. And here to 2024 fiscal year end. And here um, on the right hand side is the payroll side of it. And this is what we will be going through the PowerPoint here and also the checklist. So I'm kind of be going back and forth on that. Okay. All right. So the first thing we'll be going over for the um, fiscal year end is making sure that your districts are putting your life their life insurance in for their employees that will be retiring um, at the end of June for the summer or they can add these employees that maybe um, are not retiring, but they just want to get them in for the um, year. They can do that also. It does, they don't have to wait till calendar end to do that if they have that. It's it's up to them. Um, and then we'll be going through the process of which, um, if they don't get them entered before the last pay of June, which is um, very important if they do, that way they have less steps to do, or if they have to, or if they forget to add them um, before the June pay, then they're going to have to do some adjustments, which isn't bad, but still. Um, then we're going to be going through the STRS advance reports, um, verifying um, also that they want to make sure that we'll be going through where to find that, um, make sure that all your districts should be out of advance from last fiscal year. Um, that should have been done probably right after the last pay in August um, to make sure that everything is um, clear and they're at zero and the um, advanced mode is unchecked. So we'll go through that where you can find that too. Okay, the first one for the pre-closing procedures, um, they want to start figuring out the life insurance again for those that are retiring. Um, at the end of this fiscal year, they want to make sure they start um, doing their calculations for that. And again, we have um, our publication here, which you can find those um, calculations on how to figure that amount that they will need to charge to the employee. And then these need to be entered in payroll or current, payroll current or future. And again, or if they forget to add them before the end of June, then they have to do the adjustment records. So again, they will go to the payment. They can do it in future. Or if they ran, started their payroll for end of June and they forgot, they can do that in current. So they can still do that both. And I do have um, a payroll started here. So again, I have one here up here um all you do is click on create and then select the employee the position that they're um that they have the life insurance and you can enter the nc1 pay type as description and then you always want to do the life insurance premium again the unit probably will just be one because you're just going to have a flat rate that they figured out without calculation and they always want to make sure that they always um, um, uncheck the applies for retirement. Now, again, if they accidentally forgot to do that and they forgot to uncheck that, I'll just select a boy here. My piping's not very good today. There we go. Um, if they do try to save, they won't be able to. So again, that won't be, they won't um, accidentally put retirement on that payment. And then when they save it. So, and then the next thing, um, they also can do it during current if they already started their payroll, which I already have my payroll completed. But again, um, they can enter that, which is, um, here the 
oh, try so you can see it. There we go. So you can enter the life insurance, enter um, the one for the amount, and then life insurance. And of course, on check, the applies for retirement. So again, they can do it either way. If they use current or if they forgot, they can use um, enter it at that time. Okay. The next thing, um, just to let you know that when they do process a life insurance premium type through payroll, it is going to add to their total applicable gross when they run the W-2, even though no tax is withheld. So that's just a reminder. Um, and again, if the employee is retiring, um, they may want to, um, after they enter all this in, they may want to run W-2 just to make sure that that employee has no errors. Um, that amount um, is not going to be taxed on either federal, either state or OSDI, but Medicare and FICA is calculated on that. So I do have a W-2 here, and as you can see, the $100 is here, and that amount is added into the W-2. And then the other thing I wanted to show... I'll be going back and forth here a little bit, sorry. Um, for the next thing is the city. Now they should have all their city configuration set up um, prior to this for the non-cash earnings, but they may wanna double check that um, to make sure if they're taxing the um, NC1 life insurance, which is the tax non-cash earnings. And this is where they find that box. If they have this checked, then that, yes, they are taxing that um, city will tax, is based on, sorry, non-cash earning box, and they won't um, charge that. So make sure that non, that non-cash earnings box is checked. Um, again, they will have to find that out from um, the city one way or another. Most of them I don't think do, so, but just again. Okay. All right, we'll go back over here. And that's just an example of that. Okay, the next step is if your life insurance premium type was not entered before the employee's final pay, then there's a couple of steps that the districts will have to do for each employee that they missed. So the first step will be going to core adjustments and entering under 001 federal tax. They will select the type of life insurance, a date, and then that amount that they calculated. And then they can do a description of the NC1 missed. And then the W-2 report, um, this will be added again to the total applicable gross to the federal, state, and OSCI, and Medicare. So no, um, no adjustments will be, let me see, yeah. No adjustments to those would need made. Um, the other thing, if Medicare was a, um, a held, was um, the Medicare will need to be um, added actually. Um, so once they do that, they will need to figure out the uh, Medicare um, amount just for that portion. And there is a couple that we found um, after last year that some adjustments that gonna are going to need to be made. Um, and we have those entered here. So if I go to adjustments, And I do have two employees. One employee I have that is just regular Medicare pickup or regular Medicare, and one is the pickup. So the first one I have here I'll show is Adams, which is um, just a regular employee. So my life insurance that I would have to enter is the 200 that I um, figured out, and that would be listed under um, I'll show it, um, a life insurance 001, the amount. And then also you would need to add two adjustments for that portion. So once you figure that 1.45% on that 200, 2.9 each, then you would need to add a uh, adjustment to 692 amount withheld for $2.90. 
and also for the board's amount of payroll item for $2.90 to the 692. Okay. And then the next one I have is for an employee that is full Medicare pickup. And that would be my employee, Timothy, here. And this would be, um, I figured it on life insurance of $100. Now, to figure that out, they want to make sure, all right, here it is. So when they're figuring out the life insurance for a Medicare employer pickup, um, the life insurance cost might be $100. So when they take that $100 divided by that 98, 55%, they're going to get the, um, for example, 101.47. Now, when they um, enter that $100 under the life insurance core adjustment, um, they want to make sure they just use the $100, not the 101. We'll be using that figure here a little later. So then once they add that life insurance, then they have to do a couple more um, adjustments for the Medicare. So they're gonna do um, an adjustment to the board amount of payroll item. And what this will do for $1.47 is update the 941 quarter report under quarter to date employer's Medicare contribution. So what we found that this was not up, we were missing this step here. So we added this step that this will balance your quarter report and they will not be off of that now. But they have to make sure they add this in. The next one will be the applicable gross. And this is where they would put the $1.47 also in that calculation that they did for the 101.47. So that $1.47 is the only part they need to add the applicable gross, and this is going to update the W-2 taxable gross for the Medicare. So now they will make sure when they add that, here I have a W-2 here. Uh, let's see. That will update the employee's W-2 to make sure that balances between these two figures, so we'll update this. And then the next thing would be, um, oh, sorry, would be the applicable, let's say applicable, so we did that. Oh, and that Medicare, where that's being updated, um, just so I can show you, would be down here. So that's gonna update that figure there. So making sure that they have all these steps in there so they don't miss one um, will ensure that they're balancing the quarter and the W-2 will and be imbalanced. Okay. Um, the one other thing to remember that that file, um, if they're running it through payroll and that submission or that file that they sent to USAS to post to USAS, um, is not that total gross um, is not going to be that charging that month uh, that hundred dollars if you if that's what you have for that one employee. So just a reminder on that. Um, but they can use different things to balance, like the pay summary report here. Um, it's going to be included here in the other section. And then also you'll see it down here is other pay under a hundred. Okay. And then the other thing, um, the pay report, um, this is the amount that's going to be sent over to USAS. So if you add up these figures and don't, don't add in the hundred, um, the doc overtime accrued miscellaneous and regular, that all will be included. This is that total. Minus, it's not showing that $100. So I ran a budget report just for this pay that I had, and you can see that it does not include that $100. Okay. So just a reminder, that's not going to be included in that. It is included on the all pay for the summary report, so they can use that for balancing before they post that, just so they know that they balance if they are including that $100. So it is in that all pay for right here. Okay. 
Um, another thing they can do is go to adjustments and then they can go ahead and enter if they know um, if they're using the life insurance pay type or the type and they can go ahead and run a report if they have like I don't know, 50 of them or something for big districts, they can run a report in Excel or CSV and they can total that and to make sure that their amount matches to what they're saying, that make sure they have all those figure um, entered in before they um, move on. So again, utilize the grid. Okay. Okay. So now that we got the life insurance added in, um, now the, they can start, just start running the Estrius advanced reports. They can start running these now, getting all the errors cleaned up now before they start getting closer to the first page of July. So that way they're not in a panic. Um, so go ahead and start having them um, run these. And how they would just do that is going to reports, Estrius advanced, and again, they will enter in the first day of the fis this fiscal year and the last, which is 6-30-2024. And then they can go ahead and click on each report, fiscal year to date, their advanced positions report, and the non-advanced position report. I have already um, ran mine, <clears throat> ran my reports um, prior to this. So the non-advanced position report, this is um, a report that will show all employees that are not advancing. So these will be employees probably like your superintendents that work over um, maybe the full year um, that are not advancing. <clears throat> the advanced position report would be your employees that are advancing. So this would be your teachers probably, um, maybe some other positions that um, have not um, that will be getting paid over the summer. And then also your fiscal year to date report would be all your um, employees um, that have paid in to STRS during the fiscal year. So that is a, um, a report for everybody. Um, also, just a reminder, um, the service days, these are determined by counting the employee's job calendar. So it's going, it's using the job calendar as of June 30th. Um, also to make sure in your um, attendance screen for employees, you want to make sure that they're double checking sometimes pay date stamp, they don't, they get missed or they don't get updated. So for the year, just have them um, check all the pay dates and make sure all the absence and attendance are um, entered with a pay date stamp. Um, the only thing that doesn't need a pay date stamp would be the doc days because that uses the activity date instead for SERS. So just a reminder, make sure they update <clears throat> and make sure those days are, um, that pay date is entered before they move on. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So once they're just kind of going through the reports and making sure that they're um, every every pay at, um, before they get up to um, start doing the advance, they can make sure the another thing is that they need to make sure, um, which I said in the beginning, just make sure they're out of advance before they start. So just have them double check, make sure that this is zero and also um, this is usually just for ITC use only. Um, they want to make sure that all your districts um, have this checked. This is how this is going to stop them from running any July payrolls. Um, if they uncheck this, they can go past not running advance and run their first pay in July. Um, and then we've seen some messes with that. So just make sure this is checked for them. The only ones that, um, sorry, the cat, um, the only one um, that should not have this checked is if you have a district that does not submit um, some STRS advance. So that's, you can um, check for those districts, but I think that's very um, few. Okay. So the next thing um, 
I just, we just want to mention is the month end closing. Again, I'm not going to go through the month end closing since this is uh, something that the districts do each month. Um, again, they can use our month end checklist here. And again, it is on our fiscal year end checklist, just, um, just to let you know it is here. So we have that also on the fiscal year. Um, but again, if a districts have their own checklist that they use, they can use that. So I have them go through that and making sure that they have everything um, set. Sorry, my cat wants to join us. And then the other thing is the quarter end closing is making sure they um, start running their um, quarter, uh, balancing their quarter end. And then um, again, we have our quarter end checklist here. Again, if the districts have their own, they can use that, but we do have that included here in the um, underneath our checklist or again on our fiscal year end checklist. So just making sure they go through that. So nothing has changed on that. It will be the same as you would do for your month end and quarter like you normally would. Okay. So then we're gonna um, start down in our checklist here, the STRS advanced processing. So now you're at the end of your um, end of June and you're ready to start processing. Get through here, there we go. So again, after all your June paints are completed, um, the one thing you also that you want to make sure you remember to do is early contract payoffs. So if you know any employees uh, that they're going to um, maybe retire or are going to leave, they want to make sure that they get that entered in before they run their STRS advance. So what they want to do is just go to their compensation and change that pays them contract to be if they only have two pays left instead of the four or five that is going to be for the remaining of the year. Um, make sure that they have that updated. And then they will change their pay per period. So they just want to double check to make sure that is correct and they have the right payoff amount for that employee. The other thing would be if there's going to be any employees that are going to have dock days over the summer, they want to make sure they enter that in future, now before they start running their STRS advance reports. And what they can do is, um, oh, here we go, Oop, that's too much, can't see it. So they wanna make sure they start running, um, go to future and they wanna select that employee with the compensation and then also enter the pay type of doc. So then here they can enter in those total days of what that um, amount will be for this coming summer pays and go ahead and save that. Now they can leave that um, they can leave that amount in future if they want, since um, if they're going to if that next pay in July is actually going to be when they're going to dock that employee, they can just leave that and it will be included, or they can enter effective dates also here on future. So if they know a pay, uh, maybe the second or third pay in uh, the summer months, they can enter effective day and then it will be picked up. So either or or they can just um, go in after they run STRS advance and delete it, and then they can re-add it when the employee is supposed to be docked. So again, up to the district how they wanna handle that. <clears throat> okay. So now, um, once they have that stuff all entered, life insurance, any dock days, any um, early contract payoffs, now they can go ahead and start running their STRS report and. Um, SERS advance. So rerun, have them rerun each report again, and then they'll do the um, balancing as they did um, prior. So that's just a check on. Okay. <clears throat> so the advanced fiscal year to date report. Um, again, this is listing all the employees that have SERS withholding for the fiscal year. And these are employees that have a position with retirement set to STRS. And also they have employees that have earnings in the fiscal year. 
So for advancing compensations, um, this would be this would be the accrued wages will be added to the earnings on the report. So it'll be contract contract obligation minus amount paid minus amount docked, and that will equal your accrued comp accrued wages. Um, any adjustment journals of typo equaling what total gross or payroll item code for 591 or if they're pickup 691 for these employees. And that will be including the transaction date with that falls within this fiscal year. And then these will be added to the employee's earnings on that report. And also any applicable gross of historical um, service pace items um, that were paid to employee on payrolls. Um, these were not, these are not ones that are um, imported from classic, which you shouldn't have anymore as everybody's been on it now for a while. So if we go to the fiscal year end report, here it is. So you see your earnings, the non-tax amount that's already been um, paid, and then what will be advanced and the total. Okay. Um, one thing to remember is having making sure that the compensation date is correct because it will stop them from advancing. So like teachers, um, they still get paid, what, four or five pays into the summer. So they want to make sure that their stop date is like in an August date. The first uh, will be the day before they start their new contract. Um, so they want to make sure that they have the correct compensation date. So that would be one thing to look at if... Um, a teacher's um, on the non-advance maybe, or they can't find, they're not on the advance. That'd be one thing to look at. Okay. The next thing, um, oh, again, this is just an example of the report, the fiscal year to date report. Um, be the advance, how does this calculate it for service credit? Um, it's all employees with 120 more days will receive 100% credit. And then anybody less than 120 days and part-time, um, they will be on um, decided by the STIRS decision tree. Again, we have the link here for you to um, link on here. If they have questions, um, why they are and what their percentages may be, and they have questions on that. They have a, we have it set up here where they can do the calculation for that. Let me see if I can get it to work. Here we go. And I also have that included in our um, training. Where's that? And that's right here. I did include that in here. There we go. The service guide. So I did, and I, we do have that here. Um, so they can just go ahead and you can, um, they can click on that and you can send that to them. Okay. So again, for part-time employees, they want to make sure on the position for or payroll item 450, they want to make sure that the employee is set up correctly with part-time. And then also um, the, the STRS configuration, the state minimum salary has changed from of uh, to 35,000. So now that calculation is um, has changed. So now um, we do have this in our documentation. Under STIRS advance, reports and STIRS advance, here we go. We do have all this in our STIRS advance chapter here. And then part-time employees calculation. And we have that um, here. So again, if they have questions, um, we have do have that in our documentation, how to figure that out. And their statement on salary and the STIRS configuration, it should be make sure that it's 35,000, which it should be updated. <laughs> but just to be certain, they might want to check that. And that's listed under configuration. Oop. 
wrong one, sorry. And SERS advance, 35,000. So that'd be one thing they um, you might wanna check off. I'll have them check, or if the ITC is only one for configuration. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. The next thing is uh, the retirees. You want to make sure on the 450 that they have that checked as their um, rehired retiree. Um, again, on the report, they're going to show zero credit percentage on there. And also they're going to show a flag um, as re um, retired, which is right here. So we'll have yes. And then 0%. Let's see if I can find somebody here. I know there was somebody on here. Thought I did. Right there. So it'll show yes and 0%. Um, now, if they forgot to mark this employee as retired um, and from the very beginning and they were retired the full fiscal year, then they're going to have to do some um, adjustments to correct that. And we do have that here in our documentation also. Right here, how to correct employee if it was not marked as retiree hired all fiscal year. So again, they can just follow these steps and do the um, core adjustments. And then this will get the employee correct on the report. Um, if they were halfway through, then yes, they probably will show a warning on the report. Um, and then that's okay. So they just have to find out if they were supposed to be the full fiscal year or partial, um, then they can do corrections if it was a full fiscal year. Okay. All right. Well, moving on. So the next... Um, the just wanted to go through how is the report totals being calculated for the fiscal year to date. So we have a breakdown here in the PowerPoint of how each of these are being figured and where they're coming from. So the non-tax earnings, this is the fiscal year to date gross amounts from the 450 payroll items plus the accrued wages off your compensation. The non-tax advance amounts this is the retirement amount that's going to be withheld over the summer pays. Um, usually the tax earnings and tax, tax advance amounts, these are um, not common. So they should probably be zero for all your districts. The other one would be the tax and non-tax. Again, this is the amount paid to STRS during the fiscal year plus what is advancing. And then you have your amount advanced. That's just the amount that's going to be advancing for the summer months. And then the regular pickup is tax plus non-tax minus your retiree pickup. Just right here, over here to the right. The next re on the um, report totals would be your non-tax deposit pickup amount. And again, these are payments for the 591 and 691 for the fiscal year that were made um, for the um, all the payments that were made to STRS. And then the non-tax is the non-tax deposit pickup amount plus any total advance amount of that's advancing. Again, um, these next two are not common, so they should probably be zero. And then the retiree amounts down here, it's just a separate section for all your retiree advance amounts. This is specific to those employees that have the 450 para item retiree checkbox. The next one is the positions report. And I got that printed here. Let me see which one is it? This one. Okay. 
Again, this is going to list all employees with accrued compensation, um, accrued con contribution calculation, excuse me. So again, these are going to be employees on the position that has a STRS as the retirement code and are active or inactive job status. Again, they have a contract compensation with a date range that falls within that current date of the fiscal year. Also, the contract, the compensation contract work days, they have to equal the days worked in order for them to advance. The other thing would be the contract work days must be greater than zero. The compensation pays paid must be less than the pays in the contract. And also the comp compensation contract obligation minus amount paid minus amount docked, it must be greater than zero. Um, any employees that are archived, maybe by accident, they will not be included on the STRS advance report. So if there's somebody missing, um, maybe double check that to make sure they didn't get archived their um, compensation by accident. Um, or they can archive them if they don't want them on the report, if they're supposed to be not um, showing. And again, if the employee is supposed to be on the advance report and is showing on the non-advance, um, again, they can use the compensation adjustment and they can enter, use the day's work for that compensation and then adjust the days so it matches what it should be as of June 30th. And again, that is under um, the compensation and under the contract for that employee. And they can do create and then they can adjust the um, days worked. And that will make an adjust that and they can get that on so they equal. Okay, um, here's an example of the STRS advance report, um, the contract amount due, which is the remaining amount, which is um, what they would be paid over the summer months, and then what the advance pickup will be over the summer. They also have a total number of jobs advancing, how many jobs are retired, rehired retirees, and then the total and then also the total advanced positions, which it could be more since um, you know a lot of um, employees have more than one position that could be advancing. Um, we have a sample here on how to calculate that pickup calculation amount. So what they would do is use the obligation amount and then they, the paper period and then you want to divide that between um, how many pays is left. So your paper period for the 23rd, 24th, and 25th pay is going to be times the 14%, and then that should be the 21056. The next thing would be um, the 26th pay would be the final pay, and that one could be um, a little less, as you can see, um, off by 56 cents. So what it does, it takes the obligation minus um, all the pays that were paid so far, which is 37,600, um, and the remaining amount is 1,500. So then they take that times the 14, and that gives you the 210. And then this is what the accrued count, um, calculation will be for STRS for the four pays, the total amount. And this is how that report is calculating. The next thing is the STRS advance. Um, the advance pickup is calculate using the compensation um, paper period times the remaining number of pays minus um, one plus the last pay. So again, if they have questions on this amount that's being calculated, um, they can do a report for each pay when they're running the pay. So this would be their total advance amount during the pay. Um, they can go into the compensation grid and look up the 
and add these uh, under more, pull these items in and filter the grid by the last pay date that they were paid in the retirement code of STRS and then run that in an Excel spreadsheet. And then they can calculate the advance amount on each position using this calculation that I showed above. Okay. So the next one is the non-advanced positions. Again, this is gonna be your employees that probably work all summer um, that um, are over, yes, excuse me, that work the summer months. So if they have questions, if an employee sh uh, should be advancing or not, they um, probably more likely will need to contact SIRS on that and they can help them determine that. So again, the same thing for like all the other reports. It's going to be for the retirement code in position has to be set to STRS to be included and also has to have a job status of active or inactive. It has to have a contract compensation. An employee must have a um, date range of that compensation that falls within that fiscal year end um, when they run the reports. And again, the compensation pays paid um, must be less than the pays in contract. The work days for the contract must be greater than zero, so they still have days to work. And the compensation contract days worked, um, it does not equal the contract work days as of June 30th. And again, when the report, it's using the job calendar to figure those days out. So here's an example of the non-advanced report, just has how many days are in their contract, how many days they have worked so far. So they still have days remaining. So yes, they're gonna be on the non-advanced report. And then the contract obligation to be paid yet, or the, the amount of the contract obligation, sorry, and then the amount due. Okay. And again, um, like I said, if they need help with SRS um, for reports for any errors or warnings, we do have that included here in our documentation. And down here at the bottom. If they have any questions on that. Okay, I should check where we are in our checklist here too, so I'm not skipping over anything. Okay. So that's where we're at there. Okay. So now once your STRS advanced reports have been verified and they're all in balance, Again, if your district um, wants to print them off and they keep paper copies, they can do that at this time. Um, otherwise, they will be going over to the file archive once they ran um, the SIRS submission file. So at this time, they wanna go ahead and create the SIRS advanced submission file. So, and I have one, I have it ready here. So we'll go ahead and run our SIRS advance. So now generate submission file, we'll put your organization in SIRS advance. It won't take too long. So now it's creating that SIRS advance report that you're gonna be sending, um, upload to the file to SIRS. Wait till that gets going here. I didn't think it was going to take that long. All right.
you know? I guess this is a pretty big district, so. Okay. Well, we'll just continue on and then we can come back to that. So once they start running that, um, they want to make sure that they go to, um, since a lot of them, um, we don't want them to be under the um, configuration. Um, the other option, other place they can go to see this is under um, organization. Okay. Oh, yep. It finished. There it is. Just It just went in advance. So now we're in advance. So I have my advance amount and my advanced mode is checked. So have your district go to the core organization, which we updated that in our checklist to make sure that they're in advance. Now this advance amount should match what they're showing on their advance report. I'll find it here and I don't know because I was adding stuff. So I may not, let's see if I match one night. Yep. One to oh, 1,248,193,01. Yep, I match. So they want to make sure that the total advance amount, this matches what the report is saying. If it does not, then they have some problems and they need to be taken out of advance, um, which you at the ICC will have to do, which we'll go over um, and have them recheck. So just make sure they double check this and they want to check this after every pay because this is going to decrease and this amount is going to increase and it will show should be zero at the end of that last pay. Okay. All right. The next thing. Um, the next thing we will want to go over is if your districts have a third party file that they will be receiving, hopefully they have, they will receive it probably sometime in end of June or beginning of July or um, hopefully early. And what they will have to do, they can't submit that file, the STRS um, 2406 file yet to SIRS, STRS until they merge that file from their third party. So they will have to hold off until then. Um, so what they can do, and we have it in our documentation again, that third-party file is located under STRS Advance if they need to use it. And I also we also have it in our checklist um, from fiscal year end right here, um, annual reporting record layout. Um, they will need to make sure that's in the guide, um, guidelines of how it is set up. Otherwise, the two files won't merge correctly. So make sure that file is correct before they're merging it. So what they will do then is take that file from the third party, go back over here to SIRS Advance. And now we're in SIRS Advance submission file has already been created. So this is, so now you're in advance. So what they will do is go down here for that STRS merge file, Choose the file is the file that they created here on the on um, through their district. And then the upload file is the file that the third party will send them and they will do the merge. Um, they will um, generate the STRS merge report first and make sure it looks correct. And then they can do the merge file. And then that is the file that they will use to upload to stirs themselves. Okay. And again, we have the step-by-step -step here on um, the PowerPoint and in the fiscal year-end um, procedures. Okay. And again, like I said, if they don't have any third-party file, then they can go directly to uploading the file, choose their file, upload it, and submit upload file to STRS. They don't have to wait. They can get that done and move on right away. 
Um, they don't, if they have a third party file, they don't have to wait. Um, they can move on to their um, July, 1st July payroll and they can do the merge later and send the file to STRS. That part, they can go ahead and wait. Um, the only thing that we um, they cannot do is run the first pay until they actually create this. Until this says this, they cannot run their first payroll in July. So this has to be done. Okay. Let's move on to the next. Um, and the other thing, once they do choose the file and submit, once they do it with third party or non, um, have them go back to organization and make sure this submission submitted to SERS has changed to 2024, because this is still stating that from last fiscal year. So it still hasn't said that the file, because of course I can't send it, a file to STRS, um, but this will update to 2024 at the date they submit it plus the time. So they wanna make sure this is updated to the new um, year. Strongly suggest they always check that over a couple of times, probably. Um, the STRS advance report um, is due by the first Friday in August, which is August 2nd. So just a reminder. So the next thing is, I'm gonna go back to my checklist because I don't wanna forget because there's some things in the checklist that are not in the PowerPoint, I think. Okay. All right. Okay. So we'll go here. So when the STRS advanced submission file is created, what that will do will um, move those over to utilities file archive under the, the 2024 fiscal year reports. So you're going to find a um, under the file archive fiscal year reports with the 2024 date. And then you're going to see all these um, reports in there. So have them check before they move on that these reports are sitting there um, in the file archive. Because if they don't, this could give them indication that something went wrong. So just to make sure that they double check that all these six reports are there. It might not be the merge, if ethical, of course. Um, so if they don't have those, then they would just have these other four. And again, they can find that under file archive. Under here. I don't have, uh, let's see, I didn't run the submission, so I don't have a fiscal year. But here is the prior one. So you would see it would be 2024 fiscal year. And then the next one would be they need to close their June. Once they close that June payroll and they click on that um, folder, what it's going to do then is create their um, fiscal year, some more fiscal year end reports. And it's going to create the attendance report. They're going to have their obligation, benefit obligation and waive obligation reports, which is um, I think these districts need those um, to send to maybe the auditors or um, so they are out there in CSV and PDF, uh, the leave balance report, the balance transaction status report, and the earnings register report. So all those will be out there under the fiscal year end reports. And if I go under the last one, um, they will see all these reports. So the next thing they can do then is move on to creating their July payroll and creating the July 2024, make it current, and they can start uh, processing their first pay in July. And hopefully it goes as smooth as that. Okay, so the next thing to consider is um, items during advance. Um, you wanna make sure regular and irregular pay types. Um, these are the two that cannot be used and it won't let you. So um, you can't even use them. Um, if they included a doc after SERS advance and they didn't include it, 
um, retro termination and payoff accrued wages. Um, again, this can affect the SERS advance balancing, that amount. So again, if they're off, they want to make sure they look at any of these pay types. Um, maybe they modify a, a number of pays paid um, during advance um, that they didn't have calculated prior to. That's going to throw them off on their amount. Um, also, just a reminder, under the 450 payroll items, 591 or 691 payroll items, um, it's going to list both the advance amounts and the new earnings in that fiscal year to date figure. So just a reminder, if they're going to that figure to look, they're going to have to remember that the advance amounts and new earnings is in there. And every pay, when they run the pay report, it's going to list a payroll item stirs advance amount at the bottom. So again, they can look at this amount each time, and that amount should subtract off or add onto that STRS um, um, in the organization, um, that amount. So that amount should be the same as what's being subtracted or added onto those, those two boxes. So the post-fiscal year-end STRS advance, um, when they're running the SERS per pay report, they can look on here and it will say advance amounts and it will say true. So again, have them look to make sure that these advance amounts of employees that are advancing should say true. And that's on the SERS per pay report for each pay. Okay, so as your summer pays are going through, again, like I um, we really suggest that they look on core organization after every pay and make sure this amount is decreasing, this amount is increasing. Because we want to make sure that we're going to go to zero and on advance at the last pay of August. So after all your summer pays are completed, um, you want to verify that the STRS advance amount is at zero. So there's two um, things that could happen. Um, if the amount paid back is equal or greater than the advance amount, the district will no longer be in advance. This will be unchecked. And the amount paid will be zero. Now, if the amount paid back is less than the advance amount, that advance mode flag would not be unchecked and their, um, the amount will, re will remain. So again, you can use under reports and stirs, oh, check stirs advance, and you wanna use the first pay date of July and the last pay of the of the uh, advance. So uh, four or five pays maybe. So it's the first pay of that first advance, last pay of that advance that you wanna enter and run the report. And that will show each advance through um, the summer months. Um, and they can use that to determine who is off. And then they can report those corrections to SIRS um, for the fiscal year. Um, one thing to remember, um, if the districts, um, sometimes we notice districts are not checking that uh, organization advance box to make sure that they're out of advance or if they have an amount off. Um, they have time up till the next, this December. So once December, um, through December 2024, that amount will still show. But once we hit that new current year of 2025 in January, that box will be um, will be cleared. So it will be no longer available and they won't be able to tell if they're off or not. So really um, suggest to them to they make sure they check that box and get that all cleared up before. So they don't wait and then they, they don't have that figure that they can use to determine who is off. Um, another thing we want to um, 
maybe is if they are running stirs right now and they have fiscal year 23 figures in there and they shouldn't be and they need to be removed we do have documentation on that that they can use to go ahead and get that amounts removed so they do not included in this fiscal year 24 and here in our documentation removing last year's contributions and this might be employees that were paid in July for June days worked and they don't want those in there and those should be for June 2023 maybe um um a lot of them they or maybe this upcoming year but they can use this for re core adjustments and removing those figures and we have detailed instructions here how to do that using the 450 total gross fiscal year to date 591 total amount withheld fiscal year to date or the 691 board's amount of pair item for fiscal year to date we have um screenshots here showing each adjustment that needs to be made and the fiscal year is the only box you want to check on that and again this is to remove any prior fiscal year um, wages like from 2023 that they don't want included for this upcoming year or this fiscal year so they want to make sure they use this um, these adjustments All right, so once they have um, did their corrections, um, you at the ITC will have to go in there and make sure that their box and uh, check that box for them. And then the other thing they will need to do is make sure under compensations, have them go to compensations, contract compensations. Under more, I already have it included, but if you go to more, you can include the STRS advance. Now you can see everybody that is in advance. So what they want to do is probably just double check that everybody is out of advance. So once everybody is out of advance, they sh this should be um, empty. Your grid should be empty because there should be nobody um, in advance anymore at the end of the summer. But again, there is a, um, a way to double check that and just make sure. And then if there is, you can use your mass change. I already have it in here, but we do have that again in our documentation here. So there's advanced um, for mass change to change it to false. And then I already have it selected. And then you can go ahead and execute and submit the changes. And that will get everybody out of advance. Okay. Right. Okay, so now if the district calls and says, oh, we got errors, um, hopefully they haven't ran their first pay in July yet. And if that's the case, then uh, you at the ITC can take them out of advance. Um, and then the district can correct their errors and rerun advance. And again, we have our documentation that will take you directly to our documentation to take them out of advance. And only you at the ITC can do that. And that's down here. Ah, where are you? Right here. So you would just follow these steps and take the district out of advance. As long as they have not post uh, ran their first pay in July and posted it, um, and um, if district has posted a payroll in advance but has created the HSC fire or posted their payables, um, they can they can unpost the payroll and the districts can be taken out of advance. So as long as they're not past that point, then they're fine yet.
So again, you would, what I did prior to that compensation there, um, they have to make sure, flag everybody, take everybody out of advance by select, collect, um, find everybody that's true, and then running that mass change procedure, and then making sure that in that um, configuration, uncheck that advanced box, advanced mode box. Then they can go ahead, um, rerun all their reports, update what they need to do for those employees, generate the submission file again, like um, prior, and then upload that file um, to STRS. Okay. Now, again, I think if they have um, um, a third party file, they probably will have to re merge that file. So, just a reminder on that if they if they change the advanced file. Okay. Now, if they already ran through their first payroll and posted payables, HSA, then they have to um, do the corrections through STRS and contact, contact them and then make the necessary changes um, in, through the system. Okay. So once they got to that point, now they can start adding their job calendars in if they got those from the board. They can start entering new contracts, can be entered for all the employees. Any non-contracts, they can be updated, or if they want to create new ones for fiscal year 25, they can do that. And then the final period else is scheduled for closing on August 2nd of 2024. So once they get that final L um, sent to EMIS, then at that time, after it's closed, then they have to make sure they remember to go into their configuration EMIS reporting and change that fiscal year to 2025. If they don't do that, they're going to be running the reports in the wrong year, fiscal year, and they will see um, employees missing or employees on there that shouldn't be. Um, usually that is the first place to look once they start running the uh, EMS reports for the upcoming new fiscal year. They probably didn't get this box changed. Okay, so one thing I just want to go over is on, um, I think there was a couple of things in their checklist that wasn't on there that I just wanted to go through real quick. And then I think we're done. Fiscal year. It's down here. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention is a big thing. Um, if, if, Districts are start going to need to start changing position numbers for employees, um, and these employees are in advance. We advise them not to create those yet. Do not create the new payroll items with um, new positions attached. Wait until they're out of advance, and then go ahead and create them. Um, if they do try to do this changing during advance, it does cause issues. So I just added that here in our checklist this morning. I think that... Um, is really big because we noticed that in the last couple of years that districts were trying to do that and it was causing problems with their advance. So make sure to mention to them, hold off. Do not have them change anything until that employee's out of advance. If that employee's not in advance, that's fine. But if the employee's in advance, don't have them change it. Okay. Um, the other thing to make sure that they're ready and set up is for the extracts for the auditor of the state, which they all should be set up and ready to go. But just a reminder, double check to make sure that those are um, set up, which they find under job scheduler. And make sure that they have these, make sure they're ready to run at the beginning of July because it used this as past this year. So you want all the information included. So make sure that they schedule them for the 1st of July in the new fiscal year. And then these reports will be correct. And also the other thing, if they want to send these directly to the auditor of the state, um, make sure in configuration, application configuration, they have this box checked. This will um, automatically then send that report to the auditor of the state. And we have that here in our, doc in our uh, checklist to make sure that box is checked. 
and they don't need to worry about sending it to them, which they probably most of them are already set up that way, but just to double check. Okay. And I think that was the last part of it I wanted to mention was this post fiscal. We went through the SERS advance checklist. So, okay. Um, is there any questions for this year or any questions on this, excuse me, before I move on? Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, we have some other things coming up um, for Fridays with Fiscal. Um, on June 7th, we have the May releases coming up. June 14th, we have the review of the STRS advance and balancing temps, which I will be doing. And then I'll be going into deeper of how you can pull reports and balance um, the STRS advance and what to look for. Um, so hopefully this will be helpful a little bit. So we'll be doing that on June 14th. Um, July 5th is the June releases. July 19th will be the EMIS errors and how to prepare for EOI EMIS submissions. August 2nd is the review for July releases. And then August 9th is the new fiscal year initial L reporting. Okay. I think that's it. Okay, is there any questions on anything? else for the fiscal year. And again, um, we have all the information out here um, for anything that has to do with the fiscal year end. Okay. Um, I appreciate you joining me today. Thank you. Um, hope you have a wonderful Friday. Yes, Heidi. Sorry, Andrea, just wanted to confirm, changing that um, fiscal year, the EMIS fiscal year, um, although we need to definitely wait until L is submitted, right. we still need to wait until everyone is out of advance to flip that as well too, correct? That's still best practice? Um, I guess, let's see, fiscal year 2025. I guess that would probably be okay. I mean, if they want to wait, that's fine. I mean, because it'll be under, yeah, July, August. Yeah, because they will only be like a um, probably one more pay. So that's fine. Yes, they can wait. Okay, sounds good. I know that's what we've done the last couple of years. Yeah. It seems like, I don't it works I remember if it's been something with the advance, it's kind of posed that up a little bit. So it's okay to keep that practice to tell them not to flip that right. until both things are in place. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, you can say what that. Thank you. Sorry, I did see Carla. I did see that I have August 2nd and I think it's August 9th. And now that you said that, so sorry about that because I think it is, what is August 9th? I have August 9th. I will double check to make sure. Okay, you think it's this? Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. I'll get that changed on here and change that. You're welcome. Is there anything else um, that we want to review? Okay, um, then we'll go ahead and close up for the day. And I hope you all have a good Friday and a nice weekend. Thank you.